Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D from Brooklyn giving you a little update of the frag tank. I couldn't help but sit here and look at the tank and think, wow, if you flash back to a year ago, this tank is like definitely a success story. <laughs> it's grown more frags than I have probably ever grown in the other tanks at a faster rate. And I'm pretty proud of it. I just want to take a minute to shot it out and give you guys a little run through and an update because it's it's a challenge, but it's easy to do. And a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about running these tanks. And if you dedicate yourself to just a certain amount of time each day to pay attention to what's going on in the tank and and checking stuff it's not as hard as you would think it or make it out to be it's not overly complicated and that's one of the reasons why I've been showing a lot of updates of this tank in particular because it's small it's 20 gallons I built everything into the tank it was running a skimmer but I took the skimmer off about four months ago because a the high door skimmer just stopped working I couldn't get another pump from them they weren't responsive and B, I didn't need it because the tank this small, most of my nutrient export is from two parts. That overflow which runs into that filter floss. I run a little bit of Kimmet Pure and I alternate between that and carbon and good old fashioned water changes. How do I remind myself to do water changes? Because I keep the water on hand. So it's really easy to do. One thing you might want to keep in mind is I started with easy, easy species and, and I, I want to say easy because they, they grow really fast and, and fill in spots and they're easy to frag and give to friends. A lot of people start in tanks. They come over and I'll say, hey, look, start with this because it's an easy grower. It's good to get your feet wet. The worst thing is to see someone jump into the hobby and this happens more, 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 more often than not jump in the hobby they either start with too small of a tank or too big of a tank and they don't have the time or the resources or money to maintain it so they spend a lot of money on the wrong stuff and they end up just being hot through the through the hobby like hot in and hot out i call them hot <laughs> they start hot they're hot in and hot out so uh let me just give you the brief run through it's a year old now i started this tank with uh real reef rock which is dry rock it's it's artificial rock there's my real reef logo there and uh, I started with that there's no sand in the tank I know it looks like it because you can't see anything I actually took a bio block you can't even see that because it looks like part of the <laughs> ground that is a square bio block that I had in my main tank I ran it in there so that it could build up the uh, biological uh, colony to fill the tank look at all those pods and things that have encrusted that real reef rock it looks like real reef rock now it's completely alive and filters my water but that's all thanks to the bio block seeding the tank so I don't use sand look at my earlier video I'll try to put a couple of time-lapse pictures in the end so you can see how I built it this was originally just supposed to be some egg crate and some frags but the faster I traded frags, the faster these guys spread. And, I, and the funny thing is, I can't keep Zinnia in my main tank because the nutrients are much higher in a larger tank. It's a lot harder to export a high volume of nutrients from a large system, 125, 150 gallons of water. So they thrive in this tank. Same thing with like chalices. I couldn't grow up there. The Pavona is a really beautiful piece. I love the Pavona corals. Easy to frag, easy to grow, and they just come alive. You can see that one is completely encrusted. You can't even see the plug. There is a plug under that, believe it or not. You can, let me see if I can get a top shot. You can't see the plug, but it's there. Um, the tank is filtered by the overflow. Easy corals. It flows over here. My heater is in here. I recently added the top off only because uh, what happens is I manually add the water and top it off. 
but when you add a bulk amount or if you let the water drop too low and then you add the water all in one shot it tends to make your pH fluctuate and one of the uh, staples in this tank that actually maintain my pH at a certain level and, and remove my nutrients is my makeshift refusion let me see if I can get a shot let me take the screen off that's nothing but a beta holder one of those stick on the back with the suction cup uh, beta breeder things and I filled it with the uh, Chato so there's my Chato the water flows through the back flows right into my overflow and as you can see it's completely like packed it grows out of the water at least once a week so that removes a majority of the nutrients from the water column and what you have to do to maintain that that cycle is wow that's a great shot of that the waving hands in you there but what you have to do is remove x amount of chato i remove at least like a fifth or a little less than a third of it every week to promote it growing it's the growth process which utilizes all the nutrients and that maintains my ph but what happens since it's on the same light cycle as my tank the ph reaches a peak of about 8.3 to 8.25 and then as the lights go off it drops to about maybe 8.185 which you would think is a really drastic swing but it's a constant in this tank and it takes a while for your corals when you first add them they get adapted but believe me they, they adapt really quick it's it's similar to high and low tide frames like in the ocean i do a lot of fishing so i study the tide tables in the ocean and you got to understand some of these corals like zinnia they can be completely out of the water at low tide so guess what their ph fluctuates <laughs> if there's no water there they, they get accustomed to it um uh, so that maintains a hundred percent of my filtration the uh overflow some chemi pure and carbon I, I alternate them i don't leave them in there too long removing that pad on a regular let me give you a shot of this so you can see it cheap pads no no filter socks although i have filter socks i haven't put them in there yet because it's easier to cut me a four inch square of that and remove it every week because i know i'm going to do it flows over um for the last few months i actually for actually about five six months more maybe more I'm running the fish bit, which I haven't had on this tank, but since in the months of running the fish bit, that actually controls all of my power. And that was actually what brought to my attention that the pH was fluctuating. I had no idea until I added the fish bit and it was sending me alerts at the exact same time of day. So that was really awesome. Thanks to Nate and the guys at fish bit. That was really cool because I I monitor my tank by looking at it and testing it. But with the fish bit or, you know, your control, when you add a control, it brings the science of consistency to your tank. So I looked at the graph over a week's time and at the exam, at the, uh, excuse me, at the exact same time every day, the pH would hit one level and then drop to another level at the same exact time. So that was awesome. And those guys helped me out with that. So if you don't know about fish bit, check them out. Um, the corals are actually overgrowing each other. I never had luck with acans. If you look at what I bought this head, I bought this as one head <laughs> a year ago. And I never had luck with acans. Everybody's like, dude, you got tanks, you're growing everything. You acans are the easiest thing. Well, guess what? It, we're always learning in this hobby. I've been feeding them now. One of the art of acans is to feed them, get them trained to extend the polyps. As you can see, this, this guy I just fed. These I just got from Salty H2O on Coney Island Avenue. Checked him out. He has great frags there. I got that one and this one here. This one is starting to learn my routine. Once you get them trained, they'll extend the polyps and then they'll be ready to feed and capture food and everything. But they're, they're really awesome. Everything is alive and, and thriving. Kenya trees, you know, I'm a nut about Kenya trees. They spread like only thing I could compare them to is if you have a garden, they're like mint. Once they get acclimated and they know your parameters, they are like the happiest coral in the tank. Those are a couple of frags that I recently cut and I attached them to some plugs. I'm gonna probably bring them to a, our next aquarium meeting. 
people are like, oh, I don't like uh, Kenya trees and this and that. I can shape a Kenya tree into any shape I want. You can prune them just like a tree. Look at this one, which looks like a, like a more of a cherry tree. And then look at that one right next to it. That looks like a bush. You have these and you can't even see a stalk. These are going to be like wave, like I cut, the, you can trim them and make them longer or shorter, however you want to shape them and let them grow out. That one was attached to that egg crate and it actually moved off of the egg crate and attached to the rock. So you do have to be careful where you place them. There's the egg crate. Um, the sand was originally in here from my leopard rafts, which they disappeared. Rest in peace. Sometimes you do have a failure. That was mine. Uh, those are my cardinals. I always wanted cardinals. I don't know why. I just am like intoxicated with those fish. They're just hovering in the water column. I had three. I bought two from one store and I bought two from another store. The two from the first store did not make it. They were way bigger than these. These smaller ones were way more successful. So, uh, shout out to my buddy over there at Thousand Island Aquarium. Uh, and these guys over there, so these are doing good. Shrimp's doing good. He's trained to come to this cup. Every time I walk up to the tank, he comes to the cup. Who says you can't teach an old fish new tricks or old invert, whatever. So this is D, my candy cane. Uh, yeah, that was a sad story. I bought a candy cane from the store. The woman didn't know how to pack it. She exploded the bag and I ended up with two pieces. <laughs> when there was actually one piece, it actually broke and that head did not survive. I only got one head where I should have had like three or four. So uh, that's another story. But anyway, everybody's chilling. The tank's looking good. Thought I'd shoot you an update because I was just sitting here on a Sunday checking it out. Uh, I don't know where this other guy is. He's hiding in there, my other cardinal. Hopefully he's still kicking and doing well. <laughs> but as you can see in this tank, it's easy to get lost. So this is D giving an update, man. Shoot me your questions, anybody in the Brooklyn area. If you need some frags, give me a shout because I'm completely overgrown. I have to remove some so that I have room for some new frags. Uh, Reef of Palooza is coming up and I have no room to put anything. <laughs> so that's a good problem. So until next time, this is D signing off. Be sure to hit that subscribe, like, comment. Until next time, see ya.